So, welcome again to our subject, Accounting Information System. And we are now down to the last chapter of our subject, okay? Chapter 12, which is all about the electronic commerce systems or the e-commerce system. So, for today, after the discussion, you will be able to possess a conceptual appreciation about the protocols and understand the specific purposes of several internet protocols being served. You will be able also to understand the benefits associated with internet commerce and be aware of several internet business models. You will be able also to be familiar with the risks associated with intranet and internet electronic commerce understand some issues of security assurance and trust pertaining to electronic commerce and be familiar with electronic commerce implication. So those will be the things that we're about to discuss for this last chapter. And let's start. So technically, uh, when we heard about e-commerce, pumapasok agad sa isip natin, okay, Shopee, Lazada, okay, mga online businesses, Amazons, okay? Because uh, at this time, no, uh, it is very rampant nowadays that people are using internet-based businesses, okay? Or what is called e-commerce. Now, depending upon the perception of people, no, there are various um, connotations about e-commerce. But when we talk about e-commerce here in our discussion, Okay. It is all about the electronic processing and transmission of business data, okay, which might include electronic buying or selling of goods and services. So just like what I have mentioned, diba? we have Lazada currently, the Shopee's, mga online na order na natin. Okay. Also about online delivery of digital products. Some electronic fund transfer, especially for those who are having bank accounts. You have electronic trading of stocks, diba? Uh, some people or some of you have already tried uh, to have already online tradings of stocks sa inyong financial markets. Okay? Direct customers marketing through um, telephones, tama ba? Okay? Electronic data interchange, which has already been introduced previously, diba? Which is uh, wala na tayong gagalawin doon. The business ordering up to the delivery will be uh, happening online. And then there would be an internet revolution. So most likely, no, most of our businesses in the e-commerce are already done through electronic data processing. Okay? So there are internet technologies which... um are also connected with the e-commerce. So, we have what we so-called, number one, itong packet switching. So, the internet employs communication technologies based on what we so-called packet uh, switching. So, in this particular um, scenario, okay, the messages are divided into small packets. And each packet of messages can take different rows. So, the choice of transmission path is determined in accordance with criteria that achieve optimum utilization of long-distance lines. And also, it includes yung some sort of traffic uh, congestion sa inyong internet. Diba? Okay. So, it will also take the shortest path between the endpoints. So, itong particular na uh, packets na to is um, usually used, no? in a wide area and um, when we talk about it hindi natin napapansin but technically this is more on uh, transmission communication technology okay inside our business to business or e-commerce uh, setup okay so next would be the use of virtual private network or bpn so this particular um bpn is a private network within a public network. So, ano bang ibig sabihin nun? So, let's say, for example, um, ako, I, uh, let's say, for example, in PUP setup, let's say, for example, merong isang site na kung saan only the deans, okay, or even persons could be able to access. But they can only access it 
inside PUP. Okay? Tapos, ang nangyayari, let's say for example, what is happening right now, okay? Um, nabawa, wala sa PUP yung mga deans at saka chairperson. Okay? They could not be able to access yung particular na uh, network na yun kasi naka-private, it's only accessible inside PUP. So, ang gagawin is that um, the ICTO will provide itong tinatawag na virtual private network so that what will happen is uh, the deans as well as the chairpersons could be able to access that um, particular site no? even outside of PUP. Okay? So, that's how BPN works. So, actually, no, uh, let me just show you in my laptop, I have uh, a BPN, okay, which is used. Ito, okay. So, this is an open um, BPN GUI, which is actually used for PUP, so that I can access some of the sites um, that are only accessible inside the PUP. But since um, you are working from home, then I could be able to access it, okay. Nagets yung uh, BPN. Okay, so, um, ganun din yung ginagamit ngayon halos ng mga work from home setup kasi some of the controls of businesses, they are not allowing people to access those, um, kumbaga, secured or even sensitive sites, okay, outside uh, unless you have been connected with a VPN or the virtual private network. Another internet technology is through the use of extranet. So, when we talk about extranet, this is a par password controlled network for private users rather than the general public. Kasi yung, when we talk about internet, it's more on um, totality, di ba? World Wide Web, uh, kahit sino pwede mag-access. But this extranet, it is only uh, controllable by a password network and it is usually used, sabi kanina, by a private user. So, this is used to provide access between trading partners of internal databases. So, internet sites containing information intended for private consumption frequently used an extranet configuration. So, it's somehow an internet uh, protocol, an internet-based system or processes, but again, it is only intended for private users. Okay. Also, the World Wide Web, as mentioned a while ago, it is just an internet facility that links any people, na? whether here in the Philippines or inside your business and even outside until it becomes global. Okay? So, of course, alam natin yan, di ba? Dito natin uh, nagagawa yung mga HTML codes, yung mga web publishing activities natin on the World Wide Web. Okay? So, we have also some uh, internet addresses such as the usage of email, di ba? So, through communications ngayon, hindi na natin kailangan na mag-send ng snail mail. We are just simply using emails, no? The, same, the email address. Um, important sa ating uh, e-commerce ang email kasi it is where somehow, di ba, mga escalations, mga ordering are also happening. You have also the URL address. Ang ibig sabihin ng URL is Uniform Resource Locator, which is a target site in a web browser. So, let's say, for example, ng URL, HTTPS dash, uh, semicolon, dash, dash, uh, ano ba, um, dasada.com or amazon.com. So, that's a URL. Okay? And we have also the IP address or um, this particular IP address is referring to a particular domain, okay, that is uh, for every computer node and host attached, they could have be able to have a, a, a unique IP address. So, familiar naman siguro kayo sa IP address, naririnig nyo na yan, di ba? So, parang yung one, let's say for example, um, 128 point something. Okay, pag tinignan mo yung internet, di ba ito nga yung ginagamit ng mga uh, NBI for example or CIDG to locate uh, the person no, involved in uh, cybercrime. Okay? So, these are some of the internet technologies that we are using, okay, and is affecting our e-commerce. Okay, mamaya marami pa yan. 
Uh, now, let's talk about some protocol function. So, pag narinig mo yung uh, word na protocol, okay, it has been uh, used in several of your discussions, maybe in the IT era, okay, maybe in the IT era, o kaya naman sa previous computer subject ninyo. But when we talk about protocol, protocols, these are rules and standards that governs the design of a hardware and software that permits the users of the network, okay, such as mga, ano ba yung mga users ng network natin, yung mga vendors, even the customers, okay, to communicate and share data. So, mamaya, we'll be talking about the various protocols. Now, how does this protocol functions? So, this protocol, as mentioned a while ago, facilitate the physical connection between the network devices. So, it acts as a communication um, mode, okay, and standard and rules to share data. It is a synchronized way to transfer the data between physical devices. It also provides the basis of error checking and somehow measuring the performance of the network. It also promotes uh, compatibility among network devices and it promotes network designs that are flexible, expandable, and being cost effective. So that's the function of that uh, protocol that inatawag natin rules and standard that governs the design of a hardware and software. Now let's talk about the various protocols that are used in the internet no, in relation to our e-commerce discussion. So we have number one, you have um, the TCP or the Transfer Control Protocol or the Internet Protocol or the IP. So this is a protocol which controls how individual packets of data are being formatted, transmitted, and being received. Okay? So it is a basic protocol also that permits communication between internet sites. Okay? So although this protocol is a fundamental communication protocol in the internet, okay, there are some sort of common protocols that use for specific tasks. Mama I discuss natin yun. So this TCP protocol ensures that the total number of data bytes transmitted was received. So um ngayon kasi more likely Wi-Fi na. But this particular TCP can be in the old, you may mga modem. You can check yung transfer ng gigabytes or even the how many uh, MB na yun nag run on the internet. Uh, internet mo, yung, yung data mo, okay, which transfers from one point to another point. Okay? Next would be, we have the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP. Okay, these uh, are controls for the web browser siguro familiar naman kayo kasi this http is typically used uh before yung mga uh, website extension natin or url extension natin okay so it controls yung web browsers that access the web so when you click on the link in the web page a connection is established and a web page is being displayed and is being broken okay through the use of this http Another is file transfer protocol. So, a file transfer protocol is used to transfer text files, programs, spreadsheets, and databases across the internet. Okay, so we have yung tinatawag na telnet, which is a terminal emulation protocol which uses yung TCP at saka IP-based network natin. So, overall, this allows users to run programs and review data from remote or even terminal computer. Okay, so that's how uh, the file transfer protocol works. Okay. Another also is uh, yung SM SNMP or the Simple Network Mail Protocol. Okay, so it is a most popular protocol for transmitting email messages. Okay? So, pang email messages itong SNMP na to. Then, we have also the Secure Soccer Layer or SSL and Secure Electronic Transmission or SET. Okay? 
So this is a low-level encryption scheme used to secure transmission in higher level HTTP format. So um, this is typically used for the technologies about, let's say, for example, banks kasi they need to secure the um, transactions about the credit cards o kaya naman the bank account. So it's an encryption scheme. Familiar kayo sa encryption kasi once you transfer, let's say, for example, one data which contains confidential information to another, okay, you need to encrypt it para hindi siya, let's say, uh, may manghack ng email, for example, email na lang, okay, so at least hindi nila mabubuksan um, kung wala sila ng encryption key. And usually, encryption key are passwords, okay? So, ayan, yan yung purpose ng SSL or even the set. And lastly, we have the private communication technology. Mamaya meron pa tayo mga social mga protocols. Last lang to para sa slide na to. Or the PCT. Okay? It supports the authentication and encryption to secure privacy in internet transactions. Kanina, yung SL, SSL, it is more on a low-level encryption scheme. Samantalang itong PCT, okay? A private network. So, it's it's usually a high level na. Okay? A security protocol that provides secure transactions, it encrypts and decrypts the message for transcription. So parang magkaparehas lang sila pero more on um it's it's an authentication and encryption in uh, the internet transaction. Okay? Another is what we so called OSI or the open system interface. Okay, uh, um, are you still with me, guys? Okay, are we still good? Okay, sige. So, let's continue. So, the purpose, okay, of this OSI uh, was being developed by the International Standards Organization or ISO na tinatawag natin Okay, which is a layer of set of protocols. Now, the purpose of which is to provide standards by which the products of different manufacturers can interface with one another in a seamless interconnection at a user level. Okay, so are we clear on that? This OSI system. Okay, so good. So let's talk about the benefits of e-commerce. Okay, so one of the benefits is the access to worldwide customers and or supplier base. Diba? So, alimbawa, you are in, in Manila, you can buy some products from, let's say, China or even from, let's say, Mindoro. Diba? You can be able to access anywhere else from the world. Okay yung particular product or even you can sell it no, wherever you are in the world through the use of e-commerce. Another is that there is a reduction okay, in the inventory and uh, investments and carrying costs. Why? Because of the fact that, um, let's say for example, once na may order ka lang online, then that's the time we're in, you're gonna be getting uh, the, that particular inventory. Okay? O kaya naman kung Kung ginagawa, may na manufacture pa yon then you can uh, manufacture it ahead of time because you know the order. Tama? Kaya nga may lead time yung pag-deliver um, ng mga products usually uh, kapag e-commerce tayo. Then there is also a rapid creation of business partnership to fill um, emerging market niches. So let's say for example, di ba si Shopee, alam ko ang, ang kanilang partner in delivery is the JNT, di ba? Yung may issue nga ngayon. And, ayun, that, that's that's how it works, no? We are partnering uh, with other businesses so that we could be able to have connections at the same time, mabuhay din yung business ng iba. Di ba? Kasi itong, halimbawa, sa Lazada, hindi naman yan pag mamayari lahat ni Lazada, that's actually a platform lang, but various sellers could be able to log in on that and sell their products. And it is accessible now to the customers. Okay? So, reduction in retail prices through lower marketing costs, di ba? Um, as part of the business processes, they are about to market it and at the same time, once na minarket nila, it entails costs. So, once it is uh, being 
uploaded to a platform just like Lazada and Shopee, no? Once you need that product, okay, ipwede mo na lang siya i-browse. Diba parang isahan na lang, selling the product at the same time, marketing the product uh, in just one platform. It also reduced some procurement costs because of the fact that uh, they, they are not going to procure, let's say, for example, um, more spaces to sell, di ba? Yung, yung kanilang sales department, di na maghahanap ng um, place where they are physically selling it, warehouse na lang, para store yun, tapos ipaprocess and then de-deliver yung products. Okay? And lastly, uh, somehow better customer service because, um, di ba, the communication lines are open and also pwede tayo magreklamo agad-agad and also convenience. No, convenience in terms of hindi na pupunta si customer to uh, the place where the, the item was being sold. Um, parang ito yung palagi sinasabi sa business na dalhin mo yung business dun sa tao. Diba? That's how marketing works. Okay, so let's now proceed with understanding some of the internet business models being used here in e-commerce. Okay, are you still with me? Alright, so one would be we have the information level. So at the information level of activity, an organization uses the internet to display information about their company, yung kanila mga product, or even the services that we aim provided by the company. So this level involves little more than creating a website and it is the first step taken by most of the firm entering in the internet marketplace. So when a customer access yung website, they can generally first visit yung homepage mo and this could be indexed to a site which contains your or other web pages. So larger organizations often create um, and manage their own websites internally. So um, there are businesses who has their own website but some, especially for the small businesses, wala sila. No? So, a successful um, information level or business model na to, okay, would be able to ensure that the organization has information to be displayed in the website, complete, accurate, at certain, and also, the customers can find the site and successfully navigate through it and adequate hardware and software infrastructure exist to facilitate a, uh, an access on a high usage period and only authorized users can access the information on the website. So that's how the information level business model works. Okay? I will clear on that. So they use the internet as the way how they inform the buyer or even the customers or any other people that their business exists. Another would be transaction level. Organizations usually involved at the transaction level use the internet to accept orders for customers and or to place them with their suppliers. Okay? So, di ba yung information level? Parang ganito lang yan. Okay, website ni Jollibee. Alam nila na may Jollibee. Ano yung history ng Jollibee? Okay? And then, di ba, pumapasok na rin doon sa website. Particularly, they are using it already for online ordering ng, let's say, ng mga products nila. Okay? So, that's how transaction level works. Another would be um, distribution level. So, in the distribution level, organizations okay, usually operates the usage of internet to sell and deliver their digital products to customers. So, it somehow includes yung mga subscriptions. Okay? Let's say, for example, di ba? Kung hindi man siya physical product in the, uh, let's say, for the tra transaction level, okay, so some sort of online subscriptions. Let's say, for example, mga subscriptions natin in mga software products, sa mga music, di ba, Spotify, okay, at saka other um, online and digital products. Okay? So, are we good on that? So, these are the three business models that are usually benefiting from the electronic or e-commerce um, organizational business strategy. Okay? So, let's talk about uh, the dynamic virtual organization. 
So perhaps yung ating greatest potential benefit na madederive sa ating um, e-commerce is yung ability ng firm to forge uh, dynamic business alliances with other organization to fill the unique niches in the market. Nabanggit natin yun kanina, di ba? So this may long last uh, in terms of partnership o kaya naman merong one-time ventures. So eventually, electronic partnering of business enterprises forms a dynamic virtual organization that benefits all of the parties. So parang ganito yan, di ba? So let's say for example, in this particular image na natin, nasa screen natin, okay? So we have the general marketing organization, okay? So and uh, it is where you advertise the products, di ba? Let's say for example na lang, uh, Shopee naman tayo. Let's say the Shopee is the marketing organization. So it is tied up with, um, of course, the customer could be able to access the product information from that platform okay and then we could be able to have also an access to the manufacturers or the seller the distributors diba okay and then eventually hindi naman ano hindi naman nasa isang place lang yan diba various sellers may mga sellers from manila from luzon visayas mindanao in shopee right or even in abroad pa nga Okay, there are products that were being published and advertised through this Shopee. Okay, so eventually, as mentioned to you a while ago, it creates benefits kasi nga for all of the businesses since there are partnership. So, um, yung isipin nyo lang kung may isang libong seller doon sa uh, Lazada or even sa Shopee, di ba? So, 1,000 business partnership with uh, that, that Lazada or Shopee na yun. And then also, they have partnership with the delivery Okay, their their own delivery, JNT, o kaya naman LBC or Air 21, whatever delivery it is. Okay, or even they have also some business customers. So that's how the dynamic virtual organization works. That we do not need to create one uh, physical organization, okay, to cater this all. But we could be able to create an online-based business that would uh, create partnership with various businesses. Okay? Ayan. So, there are some uh, areas of general concern when we talk about e-commerce. Of course, may mga challenges din sa e-commerce. Okay, so of course, number one is all about data security. Since we are talking about online businesses, online transactions, the data are stored in online. Now, especially yung mga, let's say, for example, yung delivery address ninyo, cellphone number ninyo, or even your email, di ba? Your name. Di ba? They are all data, and it needs to be secured. Okay? Ang tanong natin palagi, secured ba yung data natin? Of course, um, those business organizations should ensure that the business uh, platform are well secured because once na nag-hit, okay, nagkaroon ng problema dyan, nagkaroon ng glitch, then, of course, it would uh, make their business to turn down. Okay? Another is all about the business policies. So, eventually, when we talk about uh, policies, no, um, are they being publicly stated and consistently followed? Okay? Kasi, di ba, um, especially, let's say, for example, yung mga... Uh, ano na lang, ordering policy, di ba? Bawal ka na mag-cancel. Aware ba yung public? Tapat nakapublish ka doon. O kaya naman, are you allowed to return the product kapag na-deliver na as a customer? Okay, so dapat there is a clear policy in terms of those circumstances. How to order, how to how to return, di ba? How to pay it. Okay, so lahat yun concern ng business. Next would be privacy. So, it's also related doon sa data security kanina that we have um, confidential information and they need to be in private and they should be secured. Business process integrity. So, how accurate and consistent. So, somehow related din siya sa business policy. Diba? How accurate yung uh, particular na uh, processes mo. Diba? Nadideliver ba siya on time? O kaya naman may mga defects ba? Kaya nga, importante, di ba, sa isang um, internet platform yung reviews. 
bawa nag Shopee kayo or Lazada kayo, di ba may review after nyo ma-receive so that the business could be able to know or they really or even other customers could be able to know consistent ba sila dun sa policy na meron yung business or the process that they have established. Okay? So, any questions so far? Ayan. Relate na relate ah, yung mga palagi nagsasapi at saka lasado dyan. <laughs> okay? So, there are also some risks, uh, aside from the concerns kanina, the general concerns, we have also some intranet risks. Okay? Such as, there are sometimes intercepting network messages. Okay? So, um, the individual nodes on an intranet are connected with shared channel across um, which travel user IDs, okay, passwords, some confidential emails, and data files are being found. So, sometimes an authorized interception of this information is, calling, uh, is called as sniffing. Okay, so pag, when you talk about sniffing, it's more on interception of user IDs, password, or even confidential emails. Okay, so that's one risk. There's also another one uh, risk, which is accessing corporate da databases. So we're in internets, or sorry, intranets pala tayo ngayon. Intranets are connected to central corporate databases which increases the risk that an employee will view, corrupt, or kaya naman change or copy the data. So, sometimes yung mga outsiders can bribe yung mga, uh, again, pag sinabi natin intranet, it's internet, uh, internal ha, yung intranet is more on worldwide na, na-gets na nyo naman siguro yung difference kanina sa previous slides, ba? Okay? So, ayun, um, there should be um, a proper control in place so that those people who doesn't have the proper authorization should not access the corporate database. Lalo na yung mga, ano, mga of course, data nga about the delivery, the name of the customers, baka mamaya kunin nyo na isa empleyado who has an authorized access tapos ibenta sa ibang mga businesses, di ba mahirap yun. Okay, so privileged employees. So, sometimes there are employees who can override Okay, override yung mga controls, okay, for an authorized access to mission-critical data. Okay, and sometimes we are reluctant in terms of prosecution, okay. The fear of negative publicly leads to some reluctance but encourages criminal behavior. So, those are some intranet risks that we might encounter in terms of our... Uh, e-commerce. Okay. Ngayon naman, internet risk. Okay? Outside. Or overall access to the internet. Okay? So usually, no? Uh, how serious is this risk? So these are just some data that we can find in the book na binigay. So the National uh, Commerce League in the U.S., Okay, found that there are some sort of internet frauds that have arisen around 600% between 1997 and 1990. Isipin nyo na lang, this is uh, just a start of um, some sort of internet era, no? Pero marami ng fraud na nagaganap. What more pa ngayon that people are already advanced, they have more knowledge about the internet, hindi ba? Okay, there are um, some sort of complaints being filed. So, what are the risks that usually customers are encountering in terms of internet? So, ito, ito yung mga usual. Okay, theft of credit card numbers. Kaya, um, usually, you know, um, it is encouraged that if you do have cash or even uh, you could be able to pay it on cash on delivery, pay it on that rather than um, using credit cards because of the fact that, again, you are exposing um, your credit cards that will be accessible by theft. By, by, by those theft pala accessible by by those people na may balak na um, nakawin yung information mo another is also password not only about password of credit card but password of your account on which they could be able di ba may mga ganong issue ngayon di ba na access yung account mo tapos nag uh, na open nila and then order ng order tama and also some customer privacy uh the cookies. Okay, kasi they could be able to get some information about it when they could be able to access the cookies. Okay? 
at marami pang ibang concerns, 'di ba? Minsan, uh, ano ba 'yung mga internet concerns natin ngayon, 'yung um, kanina, 'di ba, may general concern, hindi parehas 'yung itsura ng product, 'di ba? Kagaya ng sapatos. Sapatos ang ganda, ang ganda-ganda, 'di ba? Worth uh, 'yung bagong labas na parang tiger something, 'di ba? Tapos pagdating sa iyo parang bloated na sapatos. Okay, or even yung, uh, yung nakita ko lang uh, yesterday is yung salamin. Yung salamin na dinidikit sa wall, yung malalaking parang um, hexagon. Tapos, na dumating sa kanya, it's just like coins yung itsura niya. ba diba? Those are some internet risks that, that customers uh, might encounter. Okay? Kanina, when we talk about internet risks on customers, ay naman, internet risk to businesses. Ano kayo yung mga internet risk to businesses? We have one, we have yung tinatawag natin na IP spoofing. Okay? So, IP spoofing is a form of masquerading to gain unauthorized access to the World Wide Web servers and or to penetrate an unlawful act without revealing one's identity. So, para ma-accomplish itong IP spoofing na to, a perpetuator modifies yung IP address and then from the originating computer to disguise his or her identity. Okay? So, a criminal may use IP spoofing to make a message appear to be coming from trusted and an authorized source and thus slip through the control system designed and then transmit the data host computer and then block out the others. So example nito yung mga hackers na kung saan yung mga false order that may appear to come from legitimate customers. So halimbawa, no? Let's say for example, sa um, a legitimate customer, no? Mag-order siya, pero yun pala, modified na yung IP address. Okay, pag clinic mo yung order, baka mamaya may virus o kaya naman it could... Uh, may mga ganun kasi, di ba, malicious wares or malware that could be able to get your data. Okay? Another also is yung DOS or the denial of service attack. So, it is an assault on a web server to prevent it from servicing its legitimate users. So, although such attack can aim at any type of website, They are particularly devastating to business entities that are prevented from receiving and processing business transactions from their customers. So, meron tayong tatlong types na yan. Mamaya, we will be talking about the different types of denial of services. Okay? So, ayan. Parang binablock yung website para makapag-process sana ng, ano, ng, ng legitimate transactions. Okay, siyempre, pag nangyari yun, na nablock yung access doon sa, or even hindi makapag-process, makapag-proceed sa um, process mo. Let's say, for example, you're selling this product, tapos mayroong isa rin online uh, seller na ganun din binibenta, then most likely, sa iba na lang sila bibili, rather than yung, because they could not be able to access your um, site. Okay? Another also are all about some malicious programs, as mentioned a while ago, no? Mga viruses, mga worms, okay, Trojan horses. Uh, those are both internet and intranet no um threats okay any question okay la naman all right so kanina nabanggit ko that there are three types of denial of services so let's talk about this okay the three types of denial of services attacks so one would be yung sin flood attack So, when a user establishes a connection on the internet, okay, a three-way handshake takes place. So, the connecting server sends um, an initiation code, uh, initiation code na tinatawag nilang SYN or the synchrono, synchronized packets to the receiving server. And then, the receiving server then acknowledges the request by returning a synchronized acknowledge okay, packet. Finally, the initiating host machine responds with an ACK packet. So eventually, this is accomplished, itong attack na to, is being accomplished by not sending the final acknowledgement to the servers, no? which causes the servers to keep signaling for acknowledgement until the server 
times out. Okay? So if the target organization could identify the server that launching the attack, then yung firewall na i-discuss natin maya-maya could be programmed to ignore all communication from that site. Okay? So ayan, um, therefore, to the receiving site, it appears na yung transmissions are coming from all over the internet. So yung 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 DOS kanina, di ba, na pag alaman natin na that is blocking, okay? the access to your web server or even to your website okay and this sin flood is technically more on uh, the acknowledgement was not being sent okay another is yung smurf okay so smurf attack involves three parties okay we have yung perpetrators intermediary at saka yung victim so, na-accomplish itong Smurf attack na to by exploiting an internet maintenance tool called a ping, which is used to test the state of network congestion and determine whether a particular host's computer is connected and available to the network. So, ang ginagawa ng perpetuator uses a program to create yung ping message packet that would contain a forged IP of the victim's computer, so parang IP spoofing, okay, rather than that actual source computer. Okay, so yung intermediary naman, which is another party dito, is that um, it is unwilling and unaware party na kung saan yung victim and to some extent suffers the same type of network congestion. Okay, so eventually, these networks may subsequently be used as intermediaries in a smurf attacks. So, uh, eventually, perpetrators have developed some tools that enables them to launch smurf attacks simultaneously from multiple intermediary uh, networks for maximum effect to the victims. So, may intermediary computer na nagpa-flood doon sa target. And then, we have the last one, which is distributed um, denial of service, which can take a uh, form of the Smurf, okay, yung sin flood, but distinguished by vast number of zombie computers hijacked to launch the attack. Okay? So, ano ba yung motivation bakit nagkakaroon ng mga DOS attack na to? So, the motivation behind it, it's maybe originally has been to punish an organization with which the perpetrator had a grievance. No? May, may meron siyang galit doon sa business na yon, or even they want just to have the bragging rights for being able to do so. Kasi di ba may mga ganun na they are doing some attack because okay, kaya ko yan eh. Okay, so also, it is somehow being done for financial gains. To be honest, in some cases, uh, merong mga gumagawa talaga nitong denial of service attack so that again, as mentioned to you a while ago, hindi, mag hindi magkaroon ng access yung user doon sa site, kaya naman madivert yung access to other sites, okay, which will be um, used by, let's say for example, yung mga competitors nila, di ba? So that yung competitors yung magigain ng advantage. Alright? Are we clear on that? Isipin nyo na lang, mag-hire pa ng ano, no? Mag-hire pa ng expert person to do that attack, no? Para lang mapabagsak yung kabilang party. Okay? So, let's talk about some securities, no? Since we have talked about kanina problems about our um, intranet, extranet, uh, as well as general concerns, now let's talk about yung mga remediation, mga securities in place, so that mapanatag yung mga users, uh, even the company and businesses, okay, to avoid any of those attacks. We have uh, encryption. So when we talk about encryption, okay, so it is a conversion of data into secret code for storage uh, in the databases and transmission over networks. So the sender uses an encryption algorithm to convert yung original message niya into coded equivalent Tapos, kapag nakarating na yung message na yon doon sa other party, then it will be decrypted para makuha yung original message. 
Okay, so halimbawa, usually usually ito sa email, no, na encounter ko sa email 'yan na pag halimbawa, um meron naman option doon eh sa Google uh, sa Gmail may button doon na encrypt. Okay? So what will happen there is uh once you encrypt, pwede magkaroon ng password 'yan. Tapos ang ginagawa, pag sinend uh, si send mo of course yung email mo encrypted, so marireceive yan nung kung sino mang sesendan mo and then you will separately email the password para ma-decrypt yung um encrypted message. Okay? So that's how it works. Kasi pag nag mayroon kasi nag-attack, nag-interfere doon sa connection niyo, let's say for example, laman nung inyong um listahan na sinesend through email is Uh, yung list of your employees baka mamaya merong mga instances na kunin yon di ba uh, yung even yung SSS fail health number nila edi eh, mayyari sa employee that's confidential tapos makakasuhan pa yung entity so kailangan encrypted okay so this is a public key encryption scheme um, although uh, parang ano rin to no there are some senders in various locations and then i-decrypt siya magkakaroon ng secret private key and then it will have a clear text. So parang ito rin yung diniskas ko kanina na there are various um senders which they encrypt their particular messages. Another security employed in the e-commerce is yung tinatawag natin na digital authentication. So it's all about digital signatures, okay? At encryption alone cannot resolve all the security concerns. So pwede kasi na magkaroon ng hackers pa rin that would really uh, get yung encrypted codes para ma-decrypt yung mga encrypted data. So, a digital signature is an electronic authentication technique that ensures that a transmitted message originated with an authorized sender and it is not being tampered after the signature was being applied. So, ang digital signature is derived from mathematically computed digests of document that has been encrypted with the sender's private key. Okay, so a digital certificate naman, okay, so, wait lang, ah. Okay, so on the other hand, uh, a digital certificate okay, is just like an electronic identification card that is used in conjunction with public key encryption system to verify the authenticity of a message sender. Okay? So, example ng mga certificate na to would be yung VeriSign. Okay? So, let's see. Uh, mamaya, mayroon tayong mga example na ganyan. Okay? Another also, security being employed to e-commerce is the use of firewalls. Hindi ito yung pang sunog, ha? This is um, not the literal one. So when we talk about firewall, these are systems being used to insulate an organization's intranet from the internet. So it can be used to authenticate an outsider user of network, verify yung kanyang authority, and then direct the user program data or service being requested. Okay, so that's somehow a software or hardware that uh, ensures the security of channels of all networks inside and outside the organization. Now, we have what is so-called network firewalls, okay, which is somehow commonly used, which provides basic screening of low security messages. Uh, example is yung um, email and routes them to their destination based on the source and destination address attach. So usually these firewalls are low cost, okay? Uses screening routers and then does not explicitly authenticate outsiders and it penetrates the system using the spoofing technique. Okay? So na avoid niya. Yun. Another would be uh, application level firewall which provides a high-level network security. Yung kaninang network level, it's somehow a low-level uh, security. But for this case, itong application firewall, level firewall, is for high-level network security. So these firewalls are being configured to run security application called proxies that perform sophisticated functions such as verifying the user's 
authentication. So, it allows routine services and emails to pass through and perform ayun nga, sophisticated functions. Okay? So, let's talk about some seal of assurance. Kasi, di ba, one of the um, problem kanina is that uh, we are not insured about this particular business website. Baka mamay, hindi siya totoo. Okay, so, um, we have trusted third-party organization which have offered seals of assurance um, that businesses can display and ma-assure nitong mga ito na yung business is legit. Okay? Hindi siya yung basta-bastang um, gawa-gawa na business. Kasi may mga ganun, di ba? Even though online na siya, web website siya, magmumukha siyang authentic, pero yung pala, ano lang siya, uh, kumbaga, it's a facade para makuha yung data mo that could really be used for any fraud. Okay, so some of the seals that you can found in some of your transactions are BBB, okay, which is the Better Business Bureau, usually sa US yan. Then we have the Trusts E, VeriSign. Itong VeriSign, palagi ko nakikita yan sa um, uh, usage ko ng debit card. Okay, the ICSA, okay, which is the International Computer Security Association. We have also the AICPA or SICA Web Trust. We have also the AICPA or even the SICA Sistrust. So these are some of the signs. Marami pang iba, okay, that was usually found in the websites. No? Um, usually nasa ilalim yan, guys. Kaya pag, ano, pwede nyo i-browse yung website muna bago nyo or even yung yung platform, tignan nyo muna kung meron sila mga um, very sign and you can also check them on the internet if they are really approved and trusted third-party organizations so that um, you could rely on doon sa application na gagamitin nyo while transacting your uh, business online. Okay? Now, since uh, we are talking about e-commerce and we are in the accounting information system, ano ngayon yung mga implications nito in our accounting, di ba? Alam naman natin, ay, online, mapapabilis yung sales, mapapabilis yung purchase, but what's the real point of it discussing here in our accounting information system subject? Of course, no, there are some privacy violations. So, pag sinabi natin privacy, it's uh, more on the level of confidentiality that the organization employs in managing customers as well as their partner's data. So, privacy applies to all of the data being collected for the customers or even any other um, people that could be able to access that particular uh, data or website. Now, uh, there are some issues no, wherein there are stated privacy policies. Dapat consistent yung mga yun, Okay? And eventually, okay, meron din 1995 safe harbor agreement which is established for the information transmittal between the US uh, and European companies. So organizations must really um, take note that privacy violations are factor that is detrimental to a client entity. Okay? So if you're going to um, provide accounting services or even auditing services to entity, no? Privacy is also been taken into account, okay, as you process your data in accounting. Okay, kasi hindi naman pwede that um, a particular privacy protection would be different, alam natin, different yan per company, and it would affect, of course, yung reliability ng data mo. Diba? Isipin nyo, may yung privacy na, na breach na then what more pa yung financial data mo being affected. Okay? Another would be, there should be a continuous auditing. Okay? So, uh, as you all know, auditors uh, might review transactions. Okay? And you need intelligent control agents or some computer programs that embody auditor-defined um processes that search electronic transactions for anomalies. Okay, so if we cannot do uh, a particular 
manual auditing in a particular syempre e-commerce na to no electronic business then we must have an in place computerized auditing techniques na again mapapag-aralan niyo in other uh, in your another accounting sub uh, AI uh, auditing in computerized environment subject okay so yeah also it provides electronic audit trails so remember na since we are already computerized supposed to be we should have an electronic audit trail no kasi nawawala na yung mga paper trails natin which uh, does not have a human intervention so eventually still there are audit trails pero importante pa rin that this audit trail should be maintained so that for future references we could be able to use them all right confidentiality of data so para yung privacy rin kanina no as a system designs become increasingly open to accommodate mga transactions your mission critical information is at risk to be exposed to the intruders so yung mga accountants dapat they need to understand some crypto graphic techniques no used to protect some confidential data being stored and transferred okay so another would be authentication so in the traditional system the business paper on which it was written determines the authenticity ng isang transaction however no since we are in the electronic system already you need to identify the customer Okay, which is not a simple task. So, madadagdagan yung work in terms of accounting, but without a physical form and review and approval process, authentication is accomplished by what we have discussed kanina na digital signatures at saka digital certificates naman. Okay, so, kumbaga may mga compensating controls pa rin as to this one. And then, non-repudiation. Okay, accountants are being responsible for assessing yung accuracy, yung completeness, validity of a transaction. Transactions that can unilaterally repudiate can lead to uncollected revenues or even legal actions. So as with the problems of authentication, electronic, com <clears throat> electronic commerce system can usually use digital signature to promote non-repudiation. Okay? Data integrity. So, since, again, online to, data could be intercepted by some attackers o kaya naman mga intruders. No? So, eventually, uh, yun nga, magtatanong tayo, oh, what more na na-attack yung website mo, paano pa kaya yung mga financial data nyo. So, there should be uh, an enough basis, enough checking to check whether your data has its integrity to be used for financial reporting. Access control. Again, we need to avoid some unauthorized access. So, kanina we have already introduced yung digital signature, digital certificates, also some passwords so that intruders will not be able to have an unauthorized access to the system. And then we have also changing legal environment since we are already in the e-commerce, of course, yung risk of uh, being legally um, legally uh, exposed no, to uh, some sort of criminal or even cyber crime are possible na kasi may mga cybercrime law naman na, di ba, na na-implement ang mga bansa to address these issues. And, ayan. Any other question, guys? Ayan. So, I hope na naintindihan nyo at bakit natin diniscuss ang e-commerce because subject na to, uh, the implications of it in our accounting. And, lastly, no, siguro i-add ko na lang dito sa um, discussion that one of the particular impact of e-commerce in the accounting process is really yung convenient na way for the consumers 
to get their product, which would really give businesses more sales. And of course, the more the sales, the more the purchases, the more the processes na nagaganap online, that would be easier for them to to make kasi ano na siya, enterprise to enterprise, business to business na yung concept nila, di ba? is really affecting our accounting data largely. Kasi mas lalong dumadami accounting data natin, maraming sales data, maraming purchase data, di ba? May mga commissions, computation ng commissions, di ba? Both sa trading partners natin. Okay, so really, um, ang ganda nung nadulot ng e-commerce. And I hope na as time goes by, this e-commerce system Okay, malay nyo, meron na rin tayo, uh, of course, naka-online na, di ba, yung ating accounting system. Even uh, our uh, online platform or e-commerce would have also, um, a technique, alam ko, meron naman na itong mga ito, eh, yung, yung uh, selling of accounting services to another through um, a website, di ba? So, some people might offer also accounting services online, no, without physically uh, na present silang dalawa no in terms of um transacting okay so ayan so this is actually the end of our discussion about uh, e-commerce so i hope may naintindihan kayo so we have discussed what the e-commerce is no ano yung uh, mga uh, protocols about it intranet or extranet what are the possible risks that might be encountered and how to address those no? and some implications as to our accounting profession. So this is now the end of our discussion for the whole accounting information system. I hope na naintindihan ninyo at may naidagdag kahit kaunti na knowledge about um, these things. Okay, so we will, uh, I will try to end this particular discussions by next week as I meet you uh, online no, and discuss to you um, the effects of AIS no, on the companies that I'm with before no, and also what are the things that you need to do in order for you to cope up with this environment. Kasi sa panahon natin ngayon, hindi na natin na-experience yung mga worksheet, yung mga notebook, Usually, large companies are already using computerized systems that would really affect how uh, we do the accounting in the online world. Okay? So, with that, uh, I hope na um, healthy pa rin kayo. You stay healthy, guys, and um, be safe. Okay? So, I'll just see you all on our discussion next week. So, have a great day, everyone, and thank you.